find the equivalent resistance between terminals A and B. This problem is difficult, and it's one of my most requested videos. So try and have a go at it. I'll give you a couple of choices. Let's make them four, as usual. Is it 5 over 6R? 11 over 12R? Just R or 6R? Notice that R is the individual resistance of any of these resistors. So all of the resistances are equal. Give this problem a try and keep watching to see the solution. This one is not easy. It's not clear at all which resistors are series with which and which are parallel with which. And there's also no clear Y to delta transformation or vice versa, which would simplify the circuit. A 3D structure is always unpleasant in some way. So if we can convert it to a 2D structure, which is electrically equivalent, then that should make things a lot easier. Now, I'm going to present two methods, and the second method is my preference, but let's present both to cater to a wide variety of preferences, okay? Notice, electrically speaking, that we have nodes that can be collapsed together because the potential is the same at some of these nodes. For example, node L is electrically equivalent to nodes N and P. And the reason being that they're one resistor away from node A. And since the resistors are equal, the voltage drop across any of these resistances will be the same. So we can conclude that P, N, and L are all at the same potential. That's very useful information. And the same can be said about nodes O, Q, and M. They're all one resistor away from node B, so since the resistors are equal, the voltage drops will be the same, and these nodes will be at the same potential. With this in mind, can we now transform this setup into something 2D that is electrically equivalent to it? Not yet. Let's try and have a deeper understanding of the branching that happens. For example, at node A, we have three branches that go towards P, N, and L. And then these in turn split into two branches. For example, at node L, we have those two branches. At node N, we have those two. And at node P, we have those two. And then each pair adds up. And eventually we have three branches that combine at node B. Can you see it? Okay. So this information, combined with knowing which nodes are at the same potential, allows us to redraw this 3D structure as follows. We have node A feeding a parallel combination of three resistors, which then splits into six resistors in parallel. Finally, these meet in pairs, and then three branches eventually combine to end up at node B. Try to compare these two setups and convince yourself that electrically speaking, they're the same. For example, this node over here is node P, N, or L. We just proved or agreed that they're at the same potential. So this can be any of these three nodes. Think of them as being collapsed into one or shorted together, for example. Likewise, this node can be O, Q, or M. So knowing the equivalence in terms of potential, in terms of voltage, allowed us to redraw the circuit in the following way. And now combining them becomes an easy problem. RAB is a series combination of three parallel combinations. The first one is three resistors in parallel, and they're equivalent, so that works out to be R over 3 plus R over 6, the middle branch, or let's say the middle parallel combination. And finally, we have another R over 3. So we have 
2r over 6 plus r over 6 plus 2r over 6. So that gives us 5r over 6. So that's it. The equivalent resistance between terminals A and B is 5 sixth any individual resistance. So that's the final answer. Now this method is not the most intuitive. It's not the easiest thing in the world to convert a 3D setup to something 2D. It needs some sort of nuanced understanding. So I'm going to present a second method, which is my personal preference. If you've been watching these videos for a while, you know my preferred method is to track current and not potential. How is that going to help? Well, we can just use Ohm's law, believe it or not, V equals IR. And this will allow us to solve for the equivalent resistance between A and B if we consider the voltage between A and B. Assuming we have a battery or a voltage source between A and B that drives current flow through this cube, then we can track the branching that happens and we can arrive at an answer for RAB. Let's see how we can do that. Let's say this voltage source causes a current I to enter node A. We agreed we have three equal branches and by current division, we know that since the resistors are equal, the current will split evenly. So we have I over three, I over three, and I over three entering each of the three branches. And then each of these splits into two branches. And again, the split is going to be equal. So we're going to have I over six over here, I over six over here, and the same thing is going to happen at the two other branches that occur. Okay, so what happens next? These pair up and become I over three, I over three, and I over three eventually meeting at node B, giving us our total current of I back. So this proves that KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, is satisfied. How is that going to help us? Let's select a single path and track the potential drop or the voltage drop that happens, allowing us to arrive at a form for VAB in terms of I. For example, I'm going to choose path APOB. You can choose any other path connecting point A to point B. But going with APOB, the voltage VAB is VAP plus VPO plus VOB, right? These three voltage drops eventually give you the total voltage drop or the potential difference between A and B. Now, looking at VAP from the diagram we have, we can see that by Ohm's law, we simply have I over 3 times R. VPO will be I over 6 times R, and VOB will be I over 3 times R. And now we can factor out an IR from this. We have 1 third plus 1 sixth plus 1 third, and that gives us 5 over 6. This is VAB. So we can substitute it into the first equation. I cancels out, and we arrive at a form for RAB, which is exactly equivalent to what we obtained using the earlier method of tracking the potential instead of the current. RAB is 5 over 6 R, which means that the correct answer is A. Could you figure it out?